Hey guys, thanks for swinging on by to see Kyle the Phone Guy. So, I'm pretty sure everyone's asked about this because I've been going through, you know, back and forth. I just made a video about th two, three months ago about being an Apple sheep. I'm still wearing the Beats. So, how has my life dramatically just completely changed since going over to the Android ecosystem here? How is my life completely just, uh, completely befuddled and moved and flipped from underneath me? It hasn't. Nothing changes at all because I use in the same exact way either platform. Case closed. Ah, obviously there's more to it than that. These things are such an important part of our life that we rely on them and everyone is so anxious and you know, vi not violent but passionate about Android versus iOS and iOS versus Android and anything in between. It's it's not, but sometimes, and I know it's been said time and time again, but I just want to reiterate that there is that there is no major, major difference between how they function. They run the same things, they do the same job. Calm down. And this is exactly where you tune out of my video, but I'm gonna keep you going because I want to keep this discussion going. So at the end of the day, I have not seen my life change at all, going back and forth between the two very, admittedly very different platforms, but that's not stopping me from saying that, you know, I haven't noticed some difference in the quality of, you know, the experience. Uh, the one thing that I love very much about the iPhones was that the number one was AirDrop. So super convenient and awesome. Having the ability to take a picture on my iPad, airdrop it to my iPad, use a free version of the Adobe uh, Lightroom app, which is really awesome for free. Even if I just use a one little dollar stylus, just go in and edit in a photo, send it to my Mac for archive, and then if everything's good, I can even send it back to my phone to send to Instagram, and poof, that's it. Obviously not that easy on Android to do something like that. I have talked about how much I do like the camera systems on the LG V30, but but they definitely are for a more advanced user. In fact, that is one thing you can say overall about iOS versus Android. However, I don't want to narrow it to that because at its core, they work almost exactly the same. You have a home button that takes you home, you tap on an app to open it up, and you have settings. Fundamentally not much different. It, when you look at it that way, you, you honestly tell me if there's a different way to explain <laughs> using a smartphone because that's pretty much it. Where it lies in after that is how everything else is laid out. Now, Samsung's great at trying to make things as more streamlined, especially with their camera app. They have pretty decent software that makes it very easy for people that don't know too much about taking these photos to take better photos. And Apple's great at it. Apple's software is the best. They're amazing at making simple point and shoot software, which is good for them. And it turns out really, really good on their higher end phones. You don't necessarily get that kind of ease of use. Most higher-end Android phones are more geared towards enthusiasts who like the tweaking, who like going in and changing some settings. And it's not always apparently true, but it's definitely a different experience. It doesn't feel like it holds your hand nearly as much as an iOS device, and I can see how that definitely ruffles some feathers with some people because most people go back to the argument of you can't even change a ringtone without having to go through the iTunes store, whereas you could just put on any mp3 file and essentially make it your ringtone or change it for individual contacts and go back and forth and there's just that is one of the very small differences of something that the everyman would use to customize. I'm not talking about the custom launchers like I use and you know going to developer options and changing the animation speed. I'm talking about the simple man's customization because at the end of the day you know everyone's going to want to do something like this where they're going to make their phone look more like tailored to them and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what they're designed for. They're our personal devices and we want to personalize them. And that, I think, right there is what gravitates a, a large amount of people away from the iOS ecosystem towards the Android system because they don't feel like they get that level of personality in a device. Because, like their slogan says, together, not the same. On the other side of the coin, though, having a system that's so cohesive and together, iPhones are so incredibly, I'm going to keep throwing this word around, 
down as optimized. What does that mean in layman's terms? Is it just, like the old slogan goes, it just works. Not 100% of the time. They're not foolproof. Not at all. But I've found to have a little less of a, a little less issues with getting consistent battery life, getting consistent camera performance, and getting consistent performance from apps. Overall, in iOS devices, they just, a lot of those things worked out more because they just have one system to work with and not all of these little, you know, micro architectures and micro ecosystems between the different manufacturers to kind of code for. So that's all techno mumble jumble, you know, even I don't understand half that crap, but plain and simple, you're getting just a system that's going to be a little more reliable in the future. And you can't understate that about Apple phones. And considering that it's a device we rely on day to day, a lot of people find the comfort in that and its reliability. Just, it's like your car. The, I always say the two most important things in everyone's life are the two things that you cannot leave home without are your phone and your car keys. Everything else you literally don't necessarily even need. You know, obviously you'll want a license, you're not driving around with that. But besides the point, the two things you rely on and sometimes even the cell phone more than a car. Because so if you don't have a car, you can use your phone to hail a car. You can hail a cab, an Uber, whatever. You can use your phone to buy a new car. But at the end of the day, I can see the point of going towards a much more overall reliable system versus going into a more open but slightly less stable system. Now I personally have always kind of preferred the ability to tweak. I had my gaming PC and I loved going in there and tweaking everything, overclocking everything and that's where I get my thrills from because I honestly get more fun out of that than just having something boring stale that I know is going to work. I want to try and push it and I'm sure there are tons of other people out there. In fact that's what makes up this whole ecosystem of people. I keep using that word too often too, ecosystem. But this whole network of people on YouTube doing the same thing that I'm doing but much better. Most of them are in the same boat. They like to be able to tweak things. That's uh, it's really great and I really hope that Google keeps advancing the platform more because there's always going to be a place for it. I've been Kyle the Phone Guy. Thanks for talking with me. Hit the subscribe button if you want to find out more because I'll be posting about at least three times a week so stay tuned. Coming up soon little previews I'm going to be giving my first week impression of the LG V30. Stay tuned, hit subscribe and you'll see this guy a lot more. In terms of this guy. Hopefully you want to see. You want to see this guy more, right? Catch you later.